Hello everybody, Adam Savage here in my cave answering questions submitted by test and patrons. If you aren't one, follow the links below to become one if you would like. There are a lot of benefits and multiple levels, but that's not what I'm here to talk about. I am answering questions submitted by test and patrons today. Uh, and this is a terrific and uh, it's a good question. Nate P wants to know, what age do you think introducing a child to the artist slash making process Will have the most impact on that child, i.e., starting the fire of creativity. And does how does this equate to maker spaces? Um, I'm going to start by saying I don't think there's such I don't think that there's any such thing as a specific answer to your question. Um, I don't think I I'm not a child psychologist. I have no training in this, um, and I haven't looked or read about studies about when kids are most ready for their brains to receive information. But I have some anecdotal information to share with you in the, in, in the hopes that it is actually, that it is useful. Um, and I'm assuming you're kind of asking from a practical standpoint, either you want to be a parent or you're actually really curious about, uh, maybe you're making kits and you want to know what age you should direct them to. I don't think it's at all ever too early to introduce a kid to the idea of being creative. In fact, so many early kids' toys are what you call open, uh, 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 what do you call it? Um, open-ended building, right? Like early Legos, you know? You bought a kit, you can make a police car out of it, but you can also make a spaceship. That's, that's ideal kid play to me. Uh, color forms and, uh, and air-drying clay and FEMA and all of those things. Those are right there when you show your kid how to make a bead or a small figure or whatever, you're you're demonstrating to them the creative process. Uh, and they're getting a lot of that in school. Uh, you know, they're they're drawing stuff, they're putting stuff together. I still have some of my kids' early creations from, from elementary school. And the ones I've kept are still surpassingly beautiful to me. Um, Kurt Vonnegut uh, has an essay, and I can't remember which book it's in, but he talks about the fact that his... His, uh, his seven-year-old daughter kept coming home from school with unbelievable pieces of artwork. Like Vonnegut uh, understood culture. He knew what good abstract, good art looked like. And he was looking at these pieces his daughter was bringing home. And he was like, this is like a, an abstract masterpiece. This is like some cubist. This is incredible. How is this kid? And so he, 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 he had, had a conversation with his kid's art teacher. And what she said was second graders at the age of around seven are like so open and and one of my sons is is uh, is a kind of a camp counselor to some remote learning kids, and one of the things he says is he totally agrees. At seven years old, they're like just completely uh, open to almost every possible experience, and the the crippling social dynamics of of grade school and middle school haven't started to happen yet. Right, like the boys and girls are, they haven't started to become the alien species they will eventually become and not know how to communicate to each other. So at seven years old, they're like these perfect art machines. And Vonnegut's daughter's teacher said, I just know when to take the art away from them and say that it's done, which is brilliant. Um, you know, I grew up watching my dad fix stuff in the house and build stuff in the house. I grew up watching my grandfather had a workshop, had a carpentry workshop in his in his house. Um, I grew up around a lot of examples of people making things, both to improve their lives, to fix things and make them better, and also to to make something that they didn't have before. Uh, and that might be the most important thing you could do: is show your kids that. The world is not just obtained at stores or online mail order. That there's a whole portion of our lives we can build ourselves. And that may be that like you write your own music. It doesn't mean you have to do home projects around the house. That's definitely what I grew up with, but that's only one avenue. Um, if you play the guitar and your kid gets to see you practicing playing the guitar, gets to see you practice every day, right there, that's a, like a really important life lesson about creativity and austerity and stick and uh, 
uh, dedication. I, all of those things are really important for a kid to see. So the most, to me, the most important part about talking about creativity and the creative process is allowing there to be a, a judgment-free zone for a while so that the kid can really develop or anyone, every one of us learning a new skill needs a judgment-free zone in order to kind of figure out the rough parameters. And then once you start to make stuff with a, there's like, there's definitely a level of sophistication past which you can start to take critique and criticism and understand what you're doing. But at the beginning, it needs to be, it needs to be all about the love. It needs to be all about the like, letting your brain go where it wants to go. That's a phrase, like I'm just spitballing here. It's a great, it's a great phrase, right? What you're saying is, I'm not presenting concepts. I am saying the things off the top of my head, and if they're useful, let's talk about them. That's that's how to have a, a creative meeting. Um, how does this equate to maker spaces? Well, I mean, having traveled around the country and visited hundreds of maker spaces at this point, uh, my favorite makerspace ethos is a low threshold of entry, which is exactly what I'm talking about about parenting. A low threshold to entry. Let them try this stuff out. So when I visited Thinkbox in Cleveland, um, their goal is that you could walk in and be laser cutting in five minutes if that's what you needed to do. And there wasn't a line. Um, the low threshold to entry for a makerspace is completely mission critical to its idea of giving kids a space to try new stuff. Um, and iteration. I think a makerspace, look, we all watched our parents. We all learned great lessons from them. We all learned some terrible lessons from them. So while you're parenting and you're thinking, what lesson can I give my kid? Iteration is a really good one. Like, oh, I tried it and it didn't work. And I tried it again and it didn't work. And I tried it again and it did work. That is a tremendous little life lesson to show someone that you can do, that they can do. Uh, and one of the things I feel when I visit a lot of makers, when I visit makerspaces is many of them are not nearly dirty enough and they don't have enough crap on the walls. Obviously, I like a lot of crap on the walls. That's me. But I also think that if it took you five tries to get that um, that Christmas present you were laser cutting for your wife to work, I think you should hang up the four failed attempts. That's a really important thing to me. When I look at four attempts at something and I see a working one in the end, I don't need to be told what's going on. It is really clear. I'm looking at iteration one, iteration two, iteration three, iteration four, the success. That is such a great story because when you step into a makerspace, you got to be ready for the fact that you're going to build something two or three times. It's never going to work on the first try. Sure, sometimes it's going to work on the first try, but mostly you should not be planning for it to work on the first try. So how does, yeah, that's my basic answer. At what age? every age. Just start being creative around your kid or bring them around creative stuff or show them things that are beautiful or just look at what they're interested in and keep on putting it in front of them. And how does that equate to makerspaces? Low threshold to entry, lots of failed stuff up, up on the walls. Like that story should be told repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly. You're going to walk into the space and you're going to go through a process. You're not going to just make a thing. You're going to go through a process. And that thing you made, well, you're only going to make that thing once. But the process by which you make it, you're going to keep on using that process for the rest of your natural life or your unnatural life, which, whichever one you end up living. Uh, Nate. Thank you for that great question. Thank you so much, Tested Patrons. And you keep submitting your questions and I will continue, as always, to answer them. And again, as always, I will see you all next time. Stay safe.